नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेलकम टू चाय चैट विद लिवीना इंटरनेशनल विमेंस डे सो मच इज सेट स्पेशली ऑन दिस डे इक्वालिटी एम्पावरमेंट बट वॉट डज दैट रियली मीन ऑन ग्राउंड फॉर अ वुमन टू बी वर्किंग टू बी नॉट वर्किंग और इन कंट्रीज आई हैव चोजन और आई हैव द ऑनर टू स्पीक टू साइद मोना तस्नीम who is the high commissioner of bangladesh in london so thank you very much for your time especially on this and we do have our chai coffee here <laughs> thank you for having me in india today no i'm activity. absolutely so um, it's it's absolutely such a pleasure you've recently become the vice president of um women in diplomacy yeah network we, in the uk network in the uk and we are just 21 just about over 21% women in in this field is it hard to be woman in diplomacy and what are the other countries saying to you well you know there are about 40 plus women ambassadors here in the united kingdom and that shows that you know um london is a very important post for almost all the countries in the world and uh you know they're placing their women diplomats in this leadership position that means that women are doing women diplomats are doing very well exceedingly well because um you know um there are about um 170 diplomatic missions here and uh, i have been here for more than 4 years and i've seen it, it the number never exceeded 30 but now it's exceeded 40 so increasingly more women are becoming ambassadors in the united kingdom so from that perspective the women in diplomacy forum is we is a new forum which came into being in light of last year's women in diplomacy resolution at the un general assembly and you know women has been in the diplomatic profession for some time however we you just mentioned that in ambassadorial position that means in head of mission positions ambassadorial position uh they only assume 21% of the total uh pie so that is uh, a bit surprisingly low but we know that uh from south asia uh countries such as bangladesh and india are definitely um uh, holding good positions uh because our women ambassadors are going to increase day by day as more women came into bangladesh foreign service but you know globally what you ask me how do i look at it globally globally when i network and i uh, you know work in the women in diplomacy network uh, the work that we do we mentor uh, junior diplomats women diplomats in many ways and uh, promote uh, women's participation in diplomacy so um there i've seen that whether it's a developed country or a developing country uh, women diplomats you know the challenges and the opportunities all the current trends are very similar it has nothing to do with you know being coming from global south or global north uh women diplomats face similar challenges and there are sometimes there are very few um exceptional countries for example sweden or canada they have feminine uh foreign policy that means uh you know it's 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 a priority foreign policy issue to make women uh to give women in top positions very qualified women but many countries don't have feminist foreign policy so from that perspective majority countries uh you know when women ambassadors are put in challenging position they face a similar kind of uh situation it's not you know there's no stereotyping here which is what are the most challenging thing challenging is you know um, the common challenge of that common challenge, challenge is you know to establish your power structure your power position as a woman head of mission because you know uh London normally tends to have large missions and you have most missions have male you know it's male dominated missions there to have a woman lead the uh, mission itself is a challenge in itself uh, so every head of mission faces that challenge uh, sometimes you have large diaspora and as they're not used to see a woman head of mission that also is a challenge in itself and you have to address that so uh, and then you know um, it could be that um, um the host government in different cultural uh you know pockets and spaces uh you have to make a statement as a woman diplomat so um these kind of challenges or uh you know the situation they face at home could be very similar is it your thing that you want to prove yourself or is it no i i would think so. i think it's i'm it's, a woman i have to prove myself yeah i think that 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 syndrome is there that uh, with all women ambassadors with all women leadership they are absolutely they want to stay immaculate when it comes to moral position when it comes to uh you know financial issues who's well, watching yourself you just you can't go wrong as simple as that you have to do your best uh 
first of all, in representing your country. And number two is, uh, you know, you only compete against yourself because you know that you are born a woman. And from your childhood, you're competing against yourself because you have to prove yourself. Is it competing against ourselves or is it competing to say we the want system. to be equal? The system. the system, yes. yes. The system has been like that. But I know that, you know, you said UN Planet 5050 and, you know, women second. why this women in diplomacy thing came up? So women have been in diplomatic service since ever since we've had women has, you know, all our heads of state or government who are women are doing diplomatic job. Uh, for example, you know, our prime minister, she is doing diplomacy in the geopolitical diplomacy in South Asia. She's maintaining excellent relations with India. She's looking after the security of Bay of Bengal. She's maintaining a relationship with China and, you know, geopolitical sheets. So she's being a diplomat every single day. But then uh, there was no conscious effort of actually looking into the deeper into the issues of women in diplomacy. What is the representation? So that came of ages, yes, just last year. So last year, the UN General Assembly, there was first resolution taken under a South Asian Maldivian foreign minister, UNJ president, a resolution on women in diplomacy. And then there was an index created last year called Women in Diplomacy Index. And I just mentioned in that index, you know, India's position is 26th and Bangladesh is 29th. And we are the two South Asian countries that featured there. Is it hard, this index not going to up because women are taken from their homes out, which is usually the thing that, for a man. How hard is it for a woman it's very to be hard. in diplomacy? It's very hard. Okay, now you are allowing your women to go into armed forces, but you know that the woman or the police is going to be in the country. But when you have, you know, your, uh, your, your daughter-in-law or your wife is going to go away to another country. And that's very, very challenging. That is, you know, uh, family uh, values wise, family maintenance wise, maintaining the relationship wise, it's very challenging. What decision? So when for you, let's talk about you. When this came, this this is London, A grade, wonderful hosting. (laughs) Um, Did did the did who was on top? speaking to you in your heart, first of all. <laughs> the diplomat, diplomat, the mother, the wife, was there a little... And then what happened with the, the mother husband? and the wife? Yeah? The mother and the wife. So what, it's always, what, what was it telling you? Well, you know, when we take a professional decision, we still prioritize family. Hmm. We still think what is going to be the best for my son or my husband or for traveling back to Bangladesh, what will be most convenient? I think every diplomat thinks like that. But of course, there are diplomats. I personally would consider that. My values are very, very South Asian. <laughs> but I know that there are other women in the Foreign Service who would not consider this as, as a... But I think generally, you know, the way we are taught from our childhood as to, you know, family is important. Uh, you know, you must maintain your marriage. You cannot have a divorce. These are general values, you know, that are taught to uh, any South Asian woman. So therefore, we we always make sure that, you know, we prioritize these issues. So when what happened to the mother and the and and when did the mother and the uh, and the wife turn into the diplomat and tell the husband, (laughs) this is what has happened? (laughs) No, actually, uh, you know, like when I first became ambassador, I was looking for a country which is very near Dhaka. Like, you know, my family, my son or my husband can travel in two hours. So that's why I took Thailand. I went to Thailand as ambassador. And, you know, Dhaka, Thailand is just two hours. Yeah. And I was still looking for an Asian post, actually, which will take me three hours or four hours to get back to Dhaka. But, of course, you know, someone has to come to Europe. So <laughs> I did. And you were there. cold to Europe midway. And I don't like cold weather. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And what did you tell your husband who must be thinking, oh, now she's going to come back or somewhere closer? How, <laughs> did he need convincing or was he okay? No, actually, um, what happens is when you have a diplomatic spouse for a long time, after, you know, they struggle in the beginning to accept many facts, but eventually they give up. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually they realize that uh, your spouse, the husband and the wife is working in the interest of the state. And that becomes supreme. And they all join you. You know, since they can't beat you, they all join you. And, you know, eventually they they prioritize the state's interest, so the national many... interest and everything. And I would say they are the ones who sacrifice. That's true. They do. Because they know that, you know, the mother or the wife is serving a, a very important delivery for the state. And they keep up with it. What going from here where there are, and you said, less, more acceptance for women in higher positions what then are the challenges that we 
do have going forward? Yes, your, like you said, mind? since, you know, since the early 20th century when we started the International Women's Day, and, you know, this year's International Women's Day is embrace equity. Hmm. And um, we have come so much, so much forward. You know, we've come a long, long way. And like I said, uh, despite, you know, all these stereotyping, South Asian uh, women diplomats are doing so well. And we have come a long way from South Asia because I do want to look at it from a South Asian perspective that we've come so much, like you just mentioned about my family, how we have come, uh, you know, come of age in that area as well. So we've certainly come a long way, but still, I think there's a long way to go. Um, why? Yeah, what is that long way? Yes. And now uh, I personally feel, you know, let's say I'm in the United Kingdom. We look at, I look at our diaspora. Uh, I mean, if you look the, at the United Kingdom, Kingdom Parliament. Even there are sometimes these gender issues that come up. I don't know if you follow those, but yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, there are this, um, you know, uh, sometimes there are sexist issues, there's misogynistic issues. This come up globally, it comes up. But um, I would say that in Bangladesh, we're, uh, you know, we're doing very well in that perspective. Uh, we haven't heard such, uh, you know, if you look at South Asia, we haven't had these problems. Uh, there, there's a bit of uh, social sort of, uh, you know, restrictions on these kind of, um, what can I say, terms being used. So, uh, or this kind. So, what I'm saying is that um, we have a long way to go, but I still believe, I would think, I would say that South Asia and Asian uh, countries are still doing much better, in particular South Asia. Why? And how? I think uh, it's our civilizational values. It's our civilizational values. Like I said, you know, for Bangladesh, when Sheikh Mujibur Rahman uh, led Bangladesh to independence, he drafted a constitution that says democracy, secularism, Bengali nationalism, social equity or socialism at that point. So equality, inclusiveness is extremely important. And women from day one were allowed to be in the foreign service. Whereas in many societies, we know women, there was civilization of thousand years and women were not allowed to do many things, not even universal suffrage. So from that perspective, I think South Asian uh, you know, civilization gives us those values where women were in power positions in many ways. And uh, we have seen that the first, uh, you know, head of women, head of government uh, or state was from South Asia. You know, Simavu Bandar Naike. Uh, of course, there was the Israeli prime minister as well. But we also have uh, Indira Gandhi, for example. So and then we have Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. So Benazir Bhutto from Pakistan. So if you look at that, there are women who have led this region uh, much more frequently and earlier in the 40s and 50s than other continents. For example, you know, India, Bangladesh, we both have had women speakers. Uh, where's the United States Parliament? You know, it had the first speaker, Nancy Pelosi was the first woman um, speaker and of the House. And that happened much later after nearly 200 years of their independence. So what I'm saying is that, yes, we have a long way to go. But now that we we were looking at numbers and percentages, 50-50, we still have to pursue that. Because more women will make the system or the institution realize what are the women's needs. I mean, what do they have to do? What is it that they have to change? You know, change is very important. Institutions and societies have to change to accept women's presence. That is why the number is very important. It will be it's too a challenging. very hard choice for a woman. It, it is. You have it to, is. you want, there is one side of you that wants to become a mother. The moment you become a mother, you're five, five years gone. You have a constant guilt set for life. And then on the other hand, you have this job that you have to do, which demands a lot of you. How much demand can a person take? So a yes. lot of the women I'm talking to are saying, you know what, it's fine to be 1950, I think. <laughs> you know, it's there's, too a, hard. There's, a, there's a reverse process also going on. It's Many too hard. very highly qualified women, they choose not to work at all. Yeah. So, um, but you know, if you ask me generally, it's very challenging. Yeah. It's very challenging to maintain a work-life balance. It's challenging to maintain, uh, you know, that you have to be the best at your work and also be the best at, as, as a, you know, in family. It's very difficult. To what has that. worked for you? Just give a tip to all the women. Because you have been in I foreign would, service. You've yes. been mother to three <laughs> children and you have a husband. Uh, you're happily married and he's been supportive. What magic wand have you got? I, you know, nothing is perfect, but I think you need to compromise. You know, making compromises and bringing a balance is most important. What has been your compromise? My compromise is, you know, like um, I know my son's missing me. 
but I just have to ignore it at this point unless my career ends. You know, uh, but then, you know, again, my son knows from his childhood, he's saying that, you know, I'm... How do you compensate with your son? I don't know. It's just my endless love for them. And, you know, everyone understands what love is. You know, a child understands what love is. This, you know, this pros and cons to everything. Mm -hmm. But I think what's important is to enjoy the best that you can of every moment. Because life is so short. So whatever you have been given, you have been given a family, you have been given an education by your parents, you have been given a career uh, by the state, and uh, you must make the best of it. That's, that's it. That's my message to everyone. Make the best of every moment. Live every moment and live strong. Ah, very Don't good. compromise on anything. Be strong. <laughs> you just said compromise. <laughs> well, being compromising is not your weakness. Huh. If you look into Gandhiji's messages, you, huh. know, uh, you can also shake the world in a gentle way. So that could be the compromise. I think that's what it is. Shake <laughs> yes. the world in a gentle way. And yes. Only a woman can do that. Yeah. So you, otherwise, a man is going to go into And you know, by shaking the world in a gentle way, you can actually break many stereotypes. You can make, you know, break many glass ceilings yes. without even other, other people noticing it. But you have achieved your mission accomplished. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, when someone dresses all feminine, yeah, in a world that is... Um, you have a very challenging position, isn't it? And the image of a power-dressed woman, right. is that a stereotype or you, you just... Um, yes, I, I do want to, uh, you know, I dress the way I feel like, um, which is like, you know, I always wear uh, my deshi sari, you know, huh? which is like I always wear Bangladeshi sari. And there's a way of making a statement through that, that new, I'm promoting my... Um, Desi Textile. You know, Madeleine Albright, who was the first woman Secretary of State of the United States, which had a 200 years of democracy. But, you know, the women in a power position and not a stereotype position, which is a power position like the Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs, uh, came much later to the United States. And she said that she always overdressed because when women overdress, actually overdress or power dress, uh, they're taken more seriously. Really? That was her statement. But when you come to South Asia, it, that may not be necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. Rather, South Asia, women are a bit shy to overdress. Uh, particularly professional women, they're very understated. And uh, rather, if they do that, there m might be a general perception or a bias that, oh, the person is just dressing up to show off or you know, she's just trying to bring out her feminine side. No, it's not like that. I think a person should feel at ease uh, should be comfortable in, in her skin as a professional. And she should dress the way she feels that uh, best uh, makes a statement about her personality. So I dress the way uh, to reflect the way I feel about my personality. So, mm -hmm. Thank you very much. It's time for a short break uh, on Chai Chai. But when we come back, we will continue talking to the High Commissioner about equity and embracing equity, the theme of a 2023 Women's International Day. What does that really mean? So stay tuned. <laughs> 